And good morning, and it's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning it in. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. Got a special guest this morning. Haven't had him in for a while because he's... He flew south for the winter and then stayed. It's Pee Wee Lakeman. Good morning, legend. How are you? Thank you, Tim. Thanks for having me on the show. It's been, it, long. It's been a long time. It's been about five years. It's been about five years, and uh, glad to have you back in. We're going to specifically talk about a Madison boys basketball legend, of course, for those that may not know. Uh, Lake is, is a historian on Madison boys basketball, has been... Well, we'll get into that in a minute from, <laughs> to find out how long. But uh, Larry Humes, um, he's he gets accolades all the time for for what he's done, uh, and he's still getting them as well. Yes, and, you know he had a great honor this week in the small uh, college uh, hall of fame. Mm -hmm. um, you know he's been Mr. Basketball. Uh, he's been captains and All Star games, and he's just had a phenomenal career mm -hmm. from the day he was a freshman at Madison High School and clear through college. Yeah. Uh, really unbelievable if you think about it. He went on to play college <coughs> at, at uh, University of Evansville, had much success, was the leading scorer when he graduated, I think the third leading scorer now in, in, in the mm -hmm. school's history. But uh, before we get into the specifics, let's, let's go back and talk, since we haven't talked in so many years, let's go back and talk about you and what led you to do what you do. I mean, you've been showing me papers this morning that I find phenomenal, old score sheets and, and stuff that you've got. What what led you into this? Well, I always joke about it because I was so bad when I was a junior in high school, I had time to sit on the bench <laughs> and keep stats on a popcorn box or something, you know. And yeah. I, I don't know. I've You know, I always dreamed of being a Madison Cub. Never thought I'd be one because I got got cut twice. I got cut as a seventh grader, mm -hmm. went back out as an eighth grader, was probably the worst player on the team. When I was a freshman, you had to play JV. There was no such thing as a freshman team like today, mm -hmm. and I got cut. And I was really going to go out with my sophomore year, and, the J and I played in mural basketball. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Ritter and uh, Mr. Dale Hill used to come down and scout us. And, and I always said, well, that's where I made it from the intramurals. I averaged about eight points a game, and uh, coach came out uh, this year and said, "You go out for bass." I, said, I doubt it because I've been cut, you know. But right. I always, I always dreamed of being a Madison Cub. And really didn't care, and as long as I got in one game, that way I could say I was a Madison Cub. Right. But I made it a lifetime hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, the five years I was in Florida, I uh, kept. My scorecards and my score sheets right by me every night to listen to you, uh, you mm -hmm. and Travis on the radio. Yeah. So I've kept it. I've misplaced some of them, but I've got them all. Right. And uh, I've got them all the way back to any, anybody scored a point, if I can find it, I've got it on a sheet of paper someplace. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's been a... It's a fun hobby. keeps me busy. And because I do it by hand, I don't right. do it by computer. Right. And you just saw my score sheets and stuff. So, yeah, you showed me the the, the very first score sheet from from Larry playing JV ball. Is that right? Back in whatever year it was. 1958-59. Actually, he was on the JV team and mm -hmm. he played pretty well. I guess I don't remember how well he played. He had played pretty well because Mr. Ritter moved him up, and. Uh, he got in the game. He, he got in the second quarter. I'm looking at my sc old score sheet, uh -huh. and, and he got in the second game. Ended up with 10 points, and from that day on, it was nothing but Larry Humes and <laughs> Buster Briley and Larry Humes yeah. or Larry Shingleton the next uh, for that year. But uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he he just uh, it, what's unbelievable. We played Jeffersonville, who had a really good team that year, and I just went back and looked at the scrapbook. He had. Uh, he, I, I still remember him saying, boy, I had a bad game. Well, he scored nine points, and that's about all he's going to score anyway. But right. he had 20 rebounds. Yeah. You know, he was a freshman in high school. And then he had another game. He had 22 rebounds that same year, uh, which is unbelievable, you know, for a freshman. But his highlight to me was when we played Attics in the Sima State. We won the section of the regional. Went to Sima State. We played Indianapolis Attics. He hit seven out of nine field goals and four free throws. And I've always said he made his name that day. Even mm -hmm. though he scored a lot of points his senior year, Right. he got rec state recognition that particular day because he scored 18 points as a freshman and was probably, I don't know if anybody did that as a freshman right. back in those days. Right. I mean, that's, that's that was unbelievable. He averaged about eight points a game. Uh, there was a four of us, about you know seven or eight points a game because we because he played in the shadows of Buster Bali, who sure. was all-time leading scorer for two years. Right. Uh, 
and then Larry Shingleton, who you know the plan that you see, mm -hmm. and it was uh, the second leading scorer, which is unbelievable. He averaged 18 points a game, and he was the second leading scorer. Mm -hmm. And Buster averaged about 22 that year. So it was a really good team. And, yeah, and you look at, at Larry, and, and 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 you tell me he's the third leading scorer at Madison. Is that right? Yes, third mm -hmm. leading scorer at Madison. But you talk about the rebounds. So he did other things other than just shoot the basketball. Oh yeah, he was uh, he was terrific. His six, uh, 1961, because we went 60, 61, 62 undefeated regular season. Mm -hmm. 61, he practically carried the team by himself. But I, I well, let me tell you, they had he they had a really nice backup group. You know, mm -hmm. the 61 team was undefeated. Got upset by Columbus, but they had outstanding guards. They didn't score a whole lot. But there was no free ants. You know, you right. had a guy like Jack Taylor and Hank Bentz and Marvin Rue. The kids today don't know those names. But right. those guys pressed from the time the ball was thrown in until the game was over. And he really carried that team almost by himself. Mm -hmm. He averaged like 27 points a game in 61, uh, 25, 27 points. And, you know, he, he was just uh, – Unbelievable, and nobody could block his shot because in those days you shot hook shots, and right. kids today only they know maybe a little jump hook, but he could shoot it out mm -hmm. on the floor. But he he was a, he was an amazing player uh, from the time he was a freshman because when he was a freshman he was just shooting a one hand push shot, you right. know, and uh, yeah. what we used to joke on the radio he brought frost, you know, <laughs> like he did this morning, right? But, and uh, but he he was uh, really an outstanding player, and but he, you know he had some good players behind him, right? And I'll give you another little stat. In, sure. In 50-59 as a freshman, in 14 of the games that we played, he scored over eight points. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, like I said, he played by an all-time leading scorer, Buster Priley. Right. And, uh, but, uh, and, and we finished 22-2, and two, and we got beat in the semi-state game against Addicts, who went, went on to win the state tournament game the next week against Kokomo by 30-some points. So... <laughs> And then his sophomore year, they got beat by Muncie Central, who ended up being state runner-up, mm -hmm. and they was picked to win it. Junior year, they, they got beat in the regional by Columbus by three points. And then his senior year, we had beat Ball Seed the last game of the regular season, and they beat us in the afternoon game on a – to this day, it was a rotten call against Larry. They called a charging foul on him, so we had to take him out of the game. Yeah. And we ended up getting beat, and, of course, Bossy went on to win. So, you know, we played against some pretty good teams. You know, young kids today said, well, you guys must not play to anybody. And I said, we play the same teams you kids do today. Right, you know? right. And some of them are, you know, of course, you play Floyd Central, New Albany. It was only New Albany. Mm -hmm. You played Columbus East, Columbus North. It was just Columbus. And, right. You know, we played Franklin, Vincennes, Evansville, Bossy. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't get over that. They can't get over that yet. You know, they right. thought we played Saluda. And right. Deputy and <laughs> DuPont. And, yeah. Uh, and, well, we did occasionally in the sectionals, but, right. you know, we didn't play those on regular. I mean, we had a good schedule. Yeah. You look at the, the things that, that Larry accomplished, and, and this comes into conversation a lot, especially going back several years, was you know, he scored a lot of points. He did it without the benefit of a three-point line. That's true. And, and, you know, as a freshman, that's probably where he shot from mm -hmm. because he was a one-hand push shot. And the next year he started developing his jump shot. And then by his third year, you know, he was playing center, and he could he could do anything underneath the basket. I mean, he could shoot over behind his back by the time he was a senior in high school. Uh, you know, from the time he was a freshman to a senior, it was unbelievable. And, of course, when you take out the two leading scores, you know. Right. I mean, he could have scored uh, – he scored a lot of points the way it was, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he was a heck of a player, nice guy. Mm -hmm. You can't beat him. Right. And, uh, yeah, he was, uh, he's phenomenal. And when I talk about some backup players, you know, Donnie Firth played really well and, and considered today yet mm -hmm. one of the most underrated players that ever played at Madison, and Donnie Firth was on those teams too. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, yeah. had some good players. Well, let me read you this. I want to thank Hank Bentz too, Lake, and of mm -hmm. course you know Hank very well. I want to mm -hmm. thank him for forwarding this on over to me. Uh, the Missouri Valley Conference uh, will honor its past when the league conducts its annual Hall of Fame induction ceremony in St. Louis. This is coming up on Friday, March the 6th. University of Evansville basketball legend Larry Humes will be among the inductees. It's the 23rd uh, Missouri Valley Conference Hall of Fame class. features a two-sport uh, baseball football athlete, a student athlete in Mike Pryor, uh, baseball student athlete in Bill Mueller, 
uh, four-time NCAA track and field pole vault champion Kylie Hudson, coaching legends Richard Itchy Jones from Southern Illinois Baseball, Fog Allen from Kansas Basketball, and wow. Larry Hume. So some pretty good names. Yeah, in that. pretty good names in that group. Yeah. <coughs> and also uh, for, for Larry Hume, second major honor of the year, uh, it was announced earlier in 2019 that he would be the latest class to enter the small college basketball hall of fame. That was, uh, that took place in um, St. Joseph, Missouri back on Halloween. So <laughs> even though he's been away from basketball for a good period of time, Larry Hume's still getting recognized. Yeah. You know, he was here. <coughs> I talked to him in July. He was here for the uh, regatta parade. Uh -huh. He was in the parade and, he still looks good. He's friendly and yeah. nice. You know, he's, well, he was one of my best friends. <clears throat> I'll tell you a little story. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. I'm got, I'm got used to this weather. <laughs> when we was in high school, if, if Madison didn't play in the sectional at Scottsburg, we couldn't go to the game. Mm -hmm. We had to listen to it on WRA. Oh, yeah. And Larry had come to our house, which I grew up on Main Street, mm -hmm. and my mother would feed us bologna and cheese sandwiches. And he always, he always talked about that. When he would speak, he always brought that up. My mother had invited him up there, which is kind of unheard of back in the 50s, you right. know, long before the Civil Rights Movement. Right. And he, uh, he, he, he would still talk about that. And it made me always made me felt good. But Larry right. and I were good friends in high mm -hmm. school, and many years later, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so... I mean, there's a lot of stories right. oh, at, sure. at that period of time in the 50s, right. you know. So. Right. And was Larry a type of, of, of athlete like that, that as he went from freshman to sophomore to junior to senior year, got better every year? Oh, yeah. There was no question. But, like, I mean, he had, he had some great players sure. behind him, too, sure. you know. Like, I don't want to let you know, – a bunch of them. I didn't mention Gary O'Neill. Gary mm -hmm. O'Neill played on that 62 team as a starting. Gail Good were two good guards on that 62 team, went to state. And I'd mentioned Jack, and mm -hmm. I was kidding Bill Knight. I said, I'm going to mention name Jack, so listen to us. Because <laughs> <laughs> we've been friends for 70 years. Right, so. right, and, right. Uh, but Larry, when you're talking about getting better every year, you know, he averaged about eight points a game his freshman year. His sophomore year, he averaged almost 14. Buster was still there, so he was he averaged 29 points right. a game, and Donnie Firth averaged over 14. So then Larry was third. Now, his junior year, he had 17 games over 20 points. He averaged 25 over 25 points a game. He had two games he scored over 40 points. Mm -hmm. Scored 45 against Aurora and 46 against Scottsburg, but missed nine free throws. He would have had 50-some points if he only had hit part of them. Yep. But, uh, and he scored, I mean, he just, he was fabulous. And he had five games in 61, 30 or more points. Mm -hmm. So he had seven games worth more than 30 points. Uh, and then by his senior year, he's averaging uh, around 27 points a game. He had seven games over 30. He had two games that was over 40. He had 42 against Shaw, because mm -hmm. that was in the sectional. And, but he had 41 against Anderson in the semi-state. And, uh, and, of course, you know, there's 15,000 people sitting in Butler Fieldhouse right. with Larry Humes, and then they'd seen him when he was a freshman. But I've always said he made his name as a freshman. Mm -hmm. he, I mean... What he accomplished as a freshman is unbelievable in the in the in that pressure packed right. game. You know? Right, right. So yeah, he improved every year. He improved his shot, changed his shot. You know, went from one, from the arching shot to a hook shot or mm -hmm. a jump shot or anything right. you want to shoot. And apparently, he must have been a pretty hard worker in practice too, to, in order to get better. Well, well, I can only speak for his freshman year. I know he worked hard. To, yeah. I mean, to get moved up as a freshman. Sure. And another thing people don't know, he played baseball, mm -hmm. and he ran track one year. Yeah. I think he might have quit running track, but he did <laughs> run track as a, when I was a senior in high school, mm -hmm. and he played baseball, and he had a pretty good baseball career. But people forgot that. But right. you know, that was right. considered minor sports back sure. in those days. Sure. But, so he was a, not only a basketball player; he was a good athlete. Talk about the relationship he had that that you saw or what you saw with with Coach Ritter and, and himself. What? Well, apparently Coach Ritter saw something in this this young man. Yeah. Well, of course, Coach Ritter played at uh, Evansville Bossy, mm -hmm. and of course he went to Purdue and played. But he he got Buster and Larry to go to Evansville. Mm -hmm. Of course, both of those guys were recruited by big time schools right and one of them was kentucky yeah and uh i think buster might have went over for a tryout but he didn't like it and mr ritter got him to go to evansville so their relationship <coughs> relationship was really close and 
Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and and you look at and you talked about the relationship he had with with everybody else on the team. Apparently, he got a lot of respect from the teammates as well. Well, I I know he did for me because yeah. I got hurt my uh, my senior year and. Uh, he was a little upset with me, and <laughs> I got hurt. But you know the, who, who the first person was that came into our house? Mr. Ritter to check on my leg, mm -hmm. uh, or my foot. I hurt my leg, mm -hmm. and I didn't play for a couple games. But, you right. know, that's the kind of respect he had for most of us. Some mm -hmm. of them, yeah. you know, they, like any other time, just like today, some of them thought they should be playing before somebody else, right. and that went on too. So, right. But, uh, I mean, we had some great players and some kids that couldn't play mm -hmm. because they was one step behind right. the other players. I mean, there was a lot of kids who in junior high was pretty good because he played on, I think, two junior high teams and only lost one game. Yeah. Because my brother played on one of those teams, and I think they was undefeated. So, I mean, and, and he was 90, 95 and 5 in high school? 95 and 5. We lost to New Albany down at New Albany by five points, and only Buster had a good game. Everybody else had a bad game down there, and, and of course, the other four was in the tournament. Right. And if we hadn't lost that one game against New Albany, and I didn't mention it, we won 61 regular season games. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been 74 mm -hmm. or 75 undefeated regular season game, which at the time was a state record, 61, and Argus, a little school up north, ended up uh, beating, the re uh, beating that record. But yeah. that's, that's a pretty good outstanding record, too, you know, well, 60, 61 games. Yeah, that's pretty good. But and, and, you know, <clears throat> yeah, that's to, pretty good. To go 95 and 5 during your high school career, though, that's, that's, that's very impressive. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was going to mention a couple of other guys sure. names before I forget it. Because they would be mad. I mentioned Firth, Hank Benz, mm -hmm. old Phil Sherwood. I didn't mention who was a junior, didn't play much as a junior, and turned around being second leading scorer on the next year. Was a nice player, Nate Perry. And they ever said a word. Nate Perry played. Chris, his son was Jason, who's now one of our coaches at the high school. Right. And uh, Nate played. Marvin Rule, Charlie, Charlie Gray. Mm -hmm. He would knock you down to, to look at you, you know, in <laughs> practice. And. Uh, Charlie Gray, uh, let me see who else I got on there. Kenny Harrell, no longer with us, and John Perry's no longer with us. Those guys played well. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy Briley, Buster's little brother, played a little bit. Donnie McKay played. Yeah. Uh, Larry Cheatham had a really good game against Connersville. We, we, we never would have won the state finals. He scored 23 points in the, in the semi uh, state against Connersville. He had a great game. Bugs Humes, mm -hmm. Larry's. The younger brother was a freshman. He played in the state tournament as a freshman. So that's yeah. – the Hughes fam is remarkable. And, right. then, and then I haven't even mentioned Willie because he's so many years later. Right. And Willie Humes was, is right at the top of that ladder too, I'm going right. to tell you. He was super. Uh, we got upset in the region when he was a senior, but uh, – yeah, he was as good as anybody else that's ever played. I can tell you, at Madison High School, and then of course he went out to Idaho and played. It was great. We had Mike Bryan, who was a starter on the, one of those teams. <laughs> Easy Ed Sedlo played. Jim Seller, Johnny Gullion, over at Scottsburg, yep. been around for a hundred years. And, yep. Uh, so you know, he had a lot of, you know, a lot of them still come to the games. Sure. Of course, kids today wouldn't know who these people are, but you know, right. they've always been supporters of the Cubs. I went to the girls' game the other night and saw several. Ex yeah basketball players the other night so like you, you you talk about all the great players that have come through and of course uh, coach Ritter was there when when I was in school mm -hmm. uh, he had some some assistants that that were right with him that, that I think you, you probably want to mention and, and talk about them but mr. Ritter was at the top of the list but there were some guys that supported him well, that I were, mentioned Daly Hill yeah. Daly Hill was there through my junior year and then he left but mm -hmm. he was uh, also the track coach in those days too mm -hmm. and a baseball coach and a heck of an athlete in his day but the guy I haven't mentioned yet and I'm glad you asked that question I had it down for a no is Ed Arl mm -hmm. who happens to be a very personal friend of mine sure and uh, everybody loved Ed Arl. Mm -hmm. I very seldom even to the day even though he was from the old school very strict you probably have him for PE I, I sure do <laughs> and, and you know if you messed up in his class you probably went up to see Don Fisher at the administration office you know yep. but Ed Arl was uh, this he was a JV coach but mm -hmm. he was also the assistant coach for many years and uh, all, all, I think all, all us kids had respect for both those coaches sure. So. sure and of course Ed played on the state runner up team in 49 and mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I had Mr. Rule in, in uh, <laughs> PE and 
<laughs> you 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 learned quickly. Yeah, you, well, you needed to walk between the lines. Well, I had him the first year he came to Madison, so uh, you can you imagine he just <laughs> you he, were, he, you got broke in pretty quick. You better have your gym shorts <laughs> pleated and your t-shirt pleated and stand at attention when he called your name. That's right. What a great guy. That's exactly right. Uh, like, talk a little bit about the we mentioned them briefly, but talk a little bit about the Humes family uh, and and the the tradition and the history behind behind all those guys. Well, there's a you know there's a bunch of those kids we've never mentioned and. They had a brother named Eddie Humes, uh, who was the leading scorer in the intramurals. A good player, mm -hmm. I, and you know he never. I don't, as far as I know, he never went out for basketball. Mm -hmm. He had, and then he had an older brother named. Ba we called him Babe, but he was named after his dad, Frank. And of course, then you had Larry, right? And then you had Willie, or you had Bugs mm -hmm. Hard, and Willie, June Bug, June Bug, mm -hmm. Kenny, who I coached in Little League, Kenny, and June Bug, I coached him in Little League, mm -hmm. coached Willie in junior high, and then had a younger brother who, who probably would have played was a kid by the name of Charles, Bo, mm -hmm. and so the the tradition of those guys all playing and scored over 6,000 points in high school, right, and you know, almost every, every team was a winning season, right. You know, no matter what year they came through there, they mm -hmm. was a winning team. A uh, very close-knit family, still are today, who's right. left. And, right. Uh, you know. Yeah, I remember a conversation a few years ago with, with um, Larry and with the Willie. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and the conversation turned out to who was the best shooter of the two. Well, and, and Willie insisted it was him. Well, it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> You got to remember, Larry plays it with his back to the basket. Uh -huh. Willie could go 100 mile an hour stop on a dime. Right. So there, you know, there's two different positions. Mm -hmm. And um, Will, Will, I mean, because Willie got upset in the when I say Willie, the mm -hmm. team got upset in '67 against Greensburg. We'd beat Greensburg in the regular season. They beat us in the regional because that was a really nice ball team too. '67 mm -hmm. team that Willie was on. Because uh, Willie only got 18 points. Well, most kids would love to have 18 points, right. you know, because he was averaging close to 30. Mm -hmm. And but we got upset by Greensburg. But he, uh, Willie might be right. Yeah. You know, I mean, because. Uh, of course, Larry playing with these back to the basket, and then when he went into the, got drafted, I don't know, fifth round or something, mm -hmm. and, you know. I, I mean, now he's got a bit, he's probably too small for a forward, and he right. hasn't played guard. Right. So he got kind of stuck in between there, but I always felt like he should he should have played in the ABA. Well, and, and the question <laughs> has always come up, and, and every does in our travels with Travis and I and Dave Campbell uh, mm -hmm. here, there, and everywhere about. Um, you know, if they played today, if they played in today's game, how how good would they be? How difficult would it be? If you if you put Larry in, or even any one of the you know Larry or, or Willie in in today's game, what would be the challenges? Uh, you know, everybody thinks the three point line is the answer to everything. No, no. We, I mean we never played with three point sure. line. So you can can you imagine? Of course, they never saw Buster Bradley play. All, like, all his shots were probably a three pointer unless mm -hmm. he he caught some trash rebounds and put them back up. Right. It was no three point line. Uh, I think kids might be a little stronger because they have more ways to you know they got weight machines. We didn't have such things. Sure. You did it on your own. Um, they probably maybe play a little bit better defense because back in our day, well, besides the 61 team with all those guards, I mean, they pressed you from the time you came out of the locker right. room until the game was over. Right. We played zone a lot, mm -hmm. and which you don't see a whole lot of zones. Mm -hmm. You still do. Right. I mean, I always think of Jerry Bono when I think of zones. Right. You know, Jerry right. Bono is a zone man. I yep. mean, you play against his zone, you're, you, you better be able to hit it. Right. <clears throat> but we played zone almost all the time. And then uh, – in the last maybe the last quarter we'd press mm -hmm. all the teams press, but uh, oh, yeah. the Hughes brothers they'd still scored 25, 30 <laughs> points a game. You kidding me? <laughs> uh, best Madison team. Well, the state of all time, a state championship team, I'm sure. But well, 1952. Right. I mean, of course, we state runner up in '49 and '41. Mm -hmm. You put me on the spot because I'm a little prejudiced. I thought, <laughs> I thought the '59 team might be the best. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, the 60 team had almost the same guys coming back. 62 team was good. But I'm prejudiced. I'd take the 59 team. And then the reason I say that, we had two really good players on that. I mean, they were super. Mm -hmm. That was Buster and Larry Shingleton. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine being a second lead scorer at 18 points a game? Uh, 
So I'm a little prejudiced. Well, and, and to you, it's, it's because sometimes, in, in, and I speak from today's world because I see basketball all the time during the winter months about mm -hmm. uh, there's only so many shots on a team. You can only have so many guys step up and be your, your leaders. How, did, how, how was the, the shot division? How did they how did they handle that back in in the days? Well, you take a guy like Larry Shingleton. Mm -hmm. I keep using Larry because he could penetrate. Mm -hmm. Where kids today, you know, they're either a jump shot or, of course, now it's almost three point shots. I mean, right. you know, you're loaded and ready to fire it when they get it. And but Larry could shoot. He could penetrate, uh, and I always thought the other kids could penetrate was uh, Danny Gibson, mm -hmm. who played for Madison yep. and had a great career, right. and Logan Jones. Mm -hmm. Those kids could take it to the hole. A lot of kids couldn't take it, can't take it to the hole like those kids could, but Larry could in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And to say he shot a three-point shot, no, probably not. He shot it from 15, yeah. 17 feet, mm -hmm. and uh, but he could take it to the basket. And then, of course, Buster shot the long shots, and so it, it's changed, uh, you know. But don't, but yeah. when you ask about the Humes brothers, I'm gonna tell you, they could all still play today. <laughs> they knew how to play the game. Yes, indeed. they did. We get some text like from some folks listening. Appreciate the, your history on Madison Cup basketball and enjoy it. And uh, thanks, folks, for listening. <laughs> history continues to to pile up and and numbers and statistics and yeah. how long are you going to continue to do this uh, probably the day they put me in the coffin <laughs> as long as you guys keep doing it on the radio state but you know i go to home and all the yep. home and away games yep. no matter where they're at right. i still go uh, through the good games and the bad games, right. I've seen a lot, and you have too. Right. I've always supported the team, and yep. uh, I, t I met the Greensburg coach here uh, mm -hmm. just a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. I knew who he was, and he right. said, "You know who I am?" I said, "Yeah, you're the guy that beats us at, at uh, <laughs> in the sectionals every year lately." He said, "Yeah, now you're going to Silver Creek." I said, "Yeah." <laughs> But uh, so I joke about that, and then I went to the game the other night, and it's hardly a game. Of course, I've only been back about six months. Right. I always have somebody ask me about somebody. Right. The other night, somebody asked me if I had a picture of the polka dot team. Yeah. You know, the, right. When you were in school then. Yep. Somebody wanted to see a polka dot picture of the team. Right. To send it to his kid in Colorado. <laughs> you know, they've heard about it. Right. So it's it's the tradition's still there, but the young people don't know about these players. Right. I mean, they were, all of them, they were all good yeah. players, you know. I, I will mention one thing before we wrap it up. This is kind of my highlight from mm -hmm. a, a young kid at Madison when I went there. Uh, the, the year Jeff was number one, 70 two maybe that Madison beat them here at Psalm Jim. Is that right? Yeah. No, 72. I think that was when Willie Hems tipped it in, wasn't it? With, no. No. It been Willie. No. No, no, no. 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 At 67, that, they did the same thing. Yeah, that would have been early 70s. So, uh, but th that's, that was my highlight of Madison basketball as a kid back when I was you know, 12, 13 years old was when Madison upset number one Jefferson. Oh, yeah. Here. Well, they upset him a couple years before that on a tip-in by Larry, uh, Willie Humes. Mm -hmm. John Cockle was at free throw and missed it and made sure it went to Willie, and he tipped it in. We beat Mike Flynn, who was Mr. Basketball right, that year. Right, right. Highlights for me, well, and I'll give you another stat about Larry Humes. Sure. Madison had it's only had only 15 100 point games. He's involved in five of them. Wow, 500 point games, and mm -hmm. you know we haven't we haven't scored 100 points since early 80s, I think. I mean we've 98, 99, sure. but right. I mean you think he's involved in five games with 100 points? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, highlight, of course, playing for the Cubs. I mean I'm sure. a diehard Cub fan. And, right. You know I. I I heard you last the last two years, you know, we had a chance to beat in Greensburg. Right. And and I always think, you know, it was got pressure the last two minutes we was in the game, had a chance to win it. We kicked it out of bounds, mm -hmm. missed a free throw. Right. So and, and you re, re, replay those games the rest of your life because I, I replay Addicts game every stinking day. <laughs> I go to a tournament game because we got beaten in overtime. So, right. So Yeah. Yeah. The what ifs. Yeah, what if? The what if. Yeah. What if? Absolutely. If we had beat Addicts, could we beat Muncie Central that night and right. on the win the state? So, right. Yeah, I replay that game all the time. Lake, we're out of time. I appreciate you being on. Good talking with you again. Thanks. Glad to have you back in town. We've missed you for the last five years. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, <clears throat> I talked to my neighbor today before she was in the swimming pool, and I was scraping ice. So it, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get used to this weather. It's back to reality again for yes. you, isn't it? Well, we'll look forward to seeing you at the basketball games. Like, appreciate you being on this morning. Thank you very much. That's all right.
Again, I want to thank Pee Wee Lakeman for being on this morning, talking about uh, Larry Humes. And again, uh, Larry just uh, back on Halloween, uh, inducted into the Small College Basketball Hall of Fame. He will be, uh, the Missouri Valley Conference will honor uh, its past when uh, they induct him into the Hall of Fame in uh, St. Louis. That's coming up on Friday, March the 6th of 2020. Uh, again, congratulations to Larry and uh, much success that, that he's had throughout the course of his career in basketball and life as well. And we we appreciate uh, Lake coming on and talking about him. Well, we'll do it again next Saturday morning, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I want to say thanks to Jordan Bear for engineering. I'm Tim Torrance, live from McDonald's, here on Works 96.7. A routine is a good thing to have. And sometimes a routine is a good thing to break. Start your morning at McDonald's with a hot, savory breakfast prepared fresh every morning, like a sausage McMuffin with egg or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit that you can now mix and match for just four bucks until 11 a.m. Because if you don't deserve a morning that's a little easier and a lot tastier, who does?